my wife's a garage sale collector. She's at every rummage sale you'll ever see. She buys the clothes and never stops to check them. She just bags them up and brings them home to me. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Clay Ramage. In this particular day, uh, going to the bins, we're going to do some shopping along here. But also, I met my friends Dustin from McFlip and Ship and Joe from I'd Flip That. Joe and Nicole uh, host that channel on YouTube, so be sure to check them out. I'll have a link to their channels in the description. So be sure to head over there and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so we just kind of met up, go shopping, and then uh, at the end we meet together to kind of see what it is we uh, all found and who found the most valuable item which in this case it turned out to be Joe. So great score there by him. And in the meantime, I just keep digging through the bins. And my process is a little different because I just go through one bin at a time and I just keep digging and digging and digging. Whereas other people tend to, you know, scan a bin, look for things on top. If something catches their eye, they'll grab it, put it in a cart and go. Um, I'm just like to be more methodical with my searches. I don't like running around a lot, so I just start at one, dig through it, move to the next one, dig through it, just keep going. I still use the same pattern I've been doing for years, and it works for me. So, um, you know, there's no one way to do it. There's multiple ways to do it, and everything works for whoever, you know, whatever way people have, it's going to work for them, and maybe not for me, but... Uh, one of the things I found, this is the very first bin, and I always seem to find good things in this first bin. Uh, these are some decoupage prints. Um, <clears throat> still in the original package, so I picked them up. They're mushrooms. And this particular one was a cassette with a coloring book. I'm not sure what that was all about, but the cassette was missing, so it really wasn't worth anything. So I was talking to another guy about it here. Um, then I keep digging in the same bin, finding more of these decoupage uh, items plus some other prints so be sure to stay tuned till the end for the haul so you can see what all I pick up while I'm going through the bins here this first one here's a Mickey I have so many Mickey plushes right now and they're not selling so there's a few hand embroidered kitchen towels so I picked those up they were nicely done I at first I was talking and trying to figure out what I was holding them I was like, oh it's a hat <laughs> Uh, it's so easy to get distracted sometimes when you're, at least for me, my brain stay, can't stay focused very well. So here's some more of these um, prints, decoupage type items. These are all the same and they're all quite wrinkled because they got crushed in the bins. So I actually leave this little pile behind, um, but I pick up a bunch of others. And this t particular day, the bins were really piled high with a lot of big stuff. So it was hard to dig through them and get to the bottom. Here's a print I found. Nice old print. Um, and so I just keep digging. This is a child's passport. A toy passport, not a real one. Um, so there's a lot of bags, miscellaneous things, little fan. So I just keep digging, which is what I do in the bins. These were, this was another photo album. Uh, still new in its box. But... I probably could have looked them up, but again, I'm trying to focus just on vintage stuff and not just everything to sell. Um, this was really cool. It's a vintage candlestick holder, bicentennial version, so that you know this is from 1976, uh, dating back to the period of 1776 that it's replicating. Um, made in Taiwan, but I wasn't too impressed with it, so I left it. It wasn't very good quality. If it was a little better quality piece, then I might have picked it up. But I just didn't feel there was a good market for it. And just so you know, today I'm wearing my GoPro. Well, and it's not a GoPro. My camera, which is an Osmo, not a GoPro. But it, uh, so the angle sometimes gets a little funny as I'm bending over into the bins to reach to the far side of it. So sorry about that. Unlike when normally I use my phone to film. And I can control the direction of the phone a little better. Because I was wearing it on my chest harness. And this is part of the reason I don't like wearing the camera because it's harder to control the angle and then I have to do more editing of my videos to try to catch everything. So that was a Precious Moments um, like thimble. 
new in the box or in the box at least but I decided against it one of my other rules in the bins is always want to open everything up any boxes um, bags my grocery store bags I found some great stuff in uh, grocery store bags that are closed a lot of these Ziploc baggies I always look at those because you never know what you're going to find in there many times it's either small pieces of jewelry toys a lot of vintage toys um, I've even some, found some antique Christmas ornaments wrapped up and stuck in bags see, in this case see what was that some thimbles and I'm going to find another package here in a minute uh, thimbles are great sellers for me it's a collector's market I was looking at this, it's a hand-carved um, shell of some sort, but the base of it was broken, that's why I didn't take it. Otherwise, I might have. Um, it was kind of unique. So, still digging, a lot of little plastic baggies I'm looking through with toys. Nothing that impresses me. I'm not a big toy guy, but if they're vintage, then I'd grab them, but I haven't seen any. In this lot, here's a doll. wasn't quite sure about it, but wasn't impressed. This is a Mickey photo album. Again, if I was out selling whatever, then that might have been a good pickup. But there, there's that other Ziploc baggie of thimbles. One of them was a Mexican silver thimble, which alone could be 3 to $4. I sold them both at the Pink Elephant and on eBay. So it's a collector's market that, you know, I think you could do on most any platform. And checking to see there's no name on this looks like a play school but wasn't sure no name no date so I decided to pass on it and what you find in the bins is typically there's these little pockets of you know areas where they just kind of dump donations I didn't hit this end of the bin so I go back because there was somebody at that end when I pulled up to it so Anyway, so I go back to see if I can find anything on this end. Mm, so far, there's a whole bunch of, again, the little baggies with toys in it. Nothing exciting that I've found in those. Although I did pull out that little fuzzy bunny. And then <laughs> later on I end up giving it to one of the other uh, pickers there because his he said his daughters love playing with those. So it was a specific brand. don't remember exactly what brand it was, but... I'm all about giving people stuff out of the bins that I put in my cart, so. Because I have other people that, you know, as I'm digging through stuff, they'll say, oh, I think, you know, this is something you'd be interested in. Because there's not too many antique vintage um, pickers there. Most of them are going for the electronics, the clothes, um, you know, or s toys, different things. But as far as vintage items, not too many people are specifically looking for those for resale. There's certain things they'll look for, but not the kind of stuff that I look for typically. There's always a few people that pop in that are, but it's kind of my own little market. That's why I don't panic anymore when other people are going through the bins ahead of me, which I used to, you know, not panic, but I used to be concerned like, oh, what am I missing out on? But now I'm just like, eh. If it's meant for me, I'll find it. It'll be there. Because I found some great stuff after the bins have been totally picked over. Again, because I have a different market than other people at the bins. So, so yeah. It was good. And here I run into Joe as he's going through stuff. We talk about this particular bin had somebody donated their old dollhouse. It was a vintage dollhouse. But you can see the bigger parts in this bin. But I decided not to get the big dollhouse but I was picking up the dollhouse pieces because they are like you know 1970s date 1970s maybe early 80s um, but yeah so I was excited to dig through to look for the dollhouse pieces but the dollhouse itself is a huge thing it did it was all you know taken apart and into pieces so then I'd have to try to figure out if I got all of the pieces as well the other thing there was also these little baggies of buttons which I also pick up and I put them in jars so that they, uh, um, I sell them then as a lot in a jar, you know, or a bag or whatever down at the Pink Elephant. And uh, they do well with them that way. People use them for crafts or making the little button trees 
or button art, all sorts of different things. So it's a good time at the bins. There's a brief look at my card. Is that this is when I give that little fuzzy animal to the other guy for his daughters. So that was good. Let me talk about the doll furniture a little bit. I found these little tiny, you'll see them in the hall, little tiny Playmate coolers, which I'd never seen before. They were pretty cool. Refrigerator, so I got the full kitchen. And I only the problem was I only found one speaker. There's a stereo. Oh. Which is really cool. Hmm. But I only found one speaker. And you made some money too, huh? I know it was in a bank. <laughs> so but interesting. I only found uh -oh. one drawer. Now I'm just throwing away. money away like I got it. There's your 21 cents. Woohoo! Yeah. Hmm. And here, you need a creepy head for Nicole. Ooh, I, I actually have a few of those. Maybe in the same brand in the same band. Some green buttons in there too, cool. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. I have another whole bag of those. I gotta get rid of them one of these days. Oh yeah, I got the spices. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Brand new. I saw that. Hey. Hey guys, as you can tell from our intro that this is our haul video from when I met Dustin from McFlip and Ship and Joe from I'd Flip That at the bins and we kind of had a little I won't say a contest, but a, a competition of trying to see who could find the most valuable thing. And I think Joe won. He found something worth about $150. Lucky him. Uh, me, I found things worth a couple dollars. <laughs> but I'm excited about some of the stuff I found. There's some great vintage stuff today, which, you know, some days you never know. And you know me, I love my vintage stuff. And they didn't... Um, it doesn't always pan out to get good vintage stuff, but today we did. So I'm excited about that. Found some great books. Um, and yeah, so I am just going to hop into this. Um, and we talked about uh, different... Oh, and I have the links to their to Dustin and Joe's channels in the description. So be sure to check out their channel and go and subscribe to support them. They're newer YouTubers, so they're still trying to build a, a great audience. Um, and they both do great jobs with their channels. So 
be sure to check them out. Um, so I found this bag full of vintage doll heads. Like this is grandpa. He's kind of creepy. So I kind of got the creepy award today. Here's a, uh, this is a doll head with hands. So there's the two hands in there. These are still sealed in their packages. And if you guys remember, I just picked up uh, last week some um, plastic uh, circles for uh, needlepoint work from this exact same company. These are made in Hong Kong. Here's one with blue hair. Um, so yeah, there's a few of these heads in here. I'm going to them down here because and then there's another grandpa head but oh well there's didn't know there's a piece of cedar in there too um but then at the bottom of the bag oh i didn't even know that there's a whole bunch of buttons and jewelry pieces and this is all falling out of this one more you know bits and bobs oh this looks like a luggage key Rocks. Oh, I bought rocks. Ooh. I should have looked closer when I <laughs> picked this up. But yeah, oh, I bought a used Milky Way package. Anyway, not that it cost me much. So yeah, so I pick up those kind of things. And uh, then I fill, you know, like uh, canning jars or whatever else with those things and sell them down to Pink Elephant. So it doesn't cost me a lot of money for these things. Oops, I'm stepping on one of the pieces of jewelry I dropped. Um, and speaking of little stuff, I filled a whole bag full of buttons and craft items. Like here's some more beads. And then I found several packages of collectible thimbles. Oops. This one is made in Mexico. Uh, they even have a note in there that they bought it at, in Acapulco. So that's probably Mexican silver. It's not marked, which is not that uncommon. This one is a hand-painted one. It says Ekstrom on the back. And there's some wooden ones, because these were all in little baggies, so I just grabbed the whole baggies. There's the abalone covered ones. And again, I do fairly well with uh, thimbles. I just lot them up and sell, you know, 15 to 20 of them at a time, the collectible ones. Found this vintage pen that still writes, it's Ag Star Farm Credit Services, and I've actually done well with vintage pens, believe it or not, especially if they're vintage advertising. Um, the other thing I found was this one bin had a whole lot of vintage doll pieces. They actually had the huge doll house. I didn't get that. Um, but I did pick up all the little accessories. So there's like the two little lamps and found the kitchen, which this is the refrigerator. Here's the stove and sink combination or dishwasher. No, that's a stove, but here's another stove. It's interesting. Maybe it is a dishwasher. Yeah, it has to be the dishwasher because that's the stove matching the bright yellow and orange. And then also found the baby crib. Well, not really the crib, the little playpen. And the exciting part is I found the family, three people. And then I also found this extra piece of clothing. Found the TV. Look at that. Chippendale. <laughs> that was awesome. And I'm dropping stuff. Uh, the lounge chair. The uh, hutch for the dining room. Uh, I did have both drawers. The other drawers around here somewhere. For the dresser. Found the stereo system. But I only found one speaker as opposed to two. And then I also found this. I've never seen these before, but I thought they were awesome. They're the little tiny Playmate coolers. Look at those. They're just adorable. 
So I picked those up because people collect the coolers. Um, and I also found these two miniature kitties. Oh, they're so cute. They match. So yep, the miniature kitties. Them up here. There. And then I picked up a whole bunch of buttons. And again, I bundle these together and sell them in jars with the pink elephant. And I do well with those. So to me, they don't cost very much when you buy them at the bins. And uh, they're, you know, the weight's not very heavy. And I found this little baggie full of patches. Uh, Minnesota Boating Safety Education patch. There is a, ah, Paris. Paris, France. And here's just a France patch. And this is a sticker. Made in France sticker. What else do we have in this little baggie? Oh, little pins. Sugar Hills. So these are like little souvenir pins. Telemark, USA. So it's a ski resort. Oh, here's a Disney pen. It's not one of the Trader series. Not it, not Disney, sorry, it's Snoopy, Peanuts. Getting my characters all mixed up. It's a Colorado pen. There's another Snoopy, Ski Bomb. Ski Telemark. Obviously, this was all one person's collection. I have served Ramsey County Junior Sheriff. So. And then Keystone, another ski resort. So. Those are fun little finds. And found a deck of playing cards, new sealed. Again, I pick these up when I find them. They cost me about 50 cents at the bins. And I sell them for 4 to $5 a pack. All the time. So. I also found this plastic uh, Native American woman. She must have been on something originally because she has two holes on the back that she probably would have stood on. Not sure what, but probably a souvenir piece originally, but it is an older piece. Um, I found this Costa Boda Boda holder. It's marked on the bottom, Costa Boda. Um, I don't know if you can see that. And it's quite heavy. So this, I, I never would have paid $5 for this at a garage sale, but I paid $5 for it at the bins. It's one of those things that your perspective gets off when you're at the bins sometimes. Stuff you wouldn't pay that much for at a garage sale, you'll pay at the bins. And vice versa. Stuff I may buy at, a, at the bins, I wouldn't buy. Or the opposite. I'd buy at the garage sale, but I wouldn't buy at the bins. So I don't know. I found this vintage apron. It's a sheer fabric sheer polka dot with black rickrack on it homemade piece very cute maybe my friend tammy um from iowa could be interested in that she probably has something like that one um i also pick up these vintage not vintage these packages of kleenex whenever i find them at the bins again you don't pay anything for them they're nice just handy to have and they're always i'm always finding them at the bins so i don't know what all that's about something's amiss puzzle um brand new sealed this is all candies and the something amiss is that the picture on the front of the box they have a whole series of these the picture on the front is not the same as when you put the puzzle together so there's some differences so you kind of have to figure out what that difference is oh i was going to look this up hoot and nanny special i found this record i just love the title of it but it does have big names like pete seeger bob dylan clancy brothers and the village stompers so there you go it's a it's a mix um i did find some great books which we'll get into in a minute one of them's really bizarre but you guys will enjoy it i think i picked this up this is it says it's a sample it is a lab coat it's a disposable lab coat and i thought oh how fun but sometimes when you're working on things that are really dirty especially around the house or whatever you don't you know, you could wear old clothes, but you could also wear like something like that. It doesn't hardly weigh anything, so I grabbed it. Picked up this little pattern. It it wasn't in a pattern book, it was just by itself. 
And so I grabbed it. And that's the style. It's a beautifully elegant dress. Pretty old. And I also picked up these embroidered towels. There's three of them. That one with the floral design. This one with the little girl design. And then there's here's another floral design. All in their little plastic wrap, which I thought was pretty cool. I also picked up this. Um, I have not looked this up. This is... I don't even know where this is. It says Solar Rotary Display Stand. Oh! So it does take battery, so you put the battery in there, and then it spins around. I was like, this would be fun for my whatnot sales. So, and it's, oh, it's got solar here, so see it's turning with the light. So you don't need a battery per se, but you can use a battery. But that's cool. I picked that up for my use. I think that would be fun. Oh, what else? I, oh, this, I've never seen one of these before. It's called a Wilcox Gay Home Record. So these are ones that you could record at home if you had the proper equipment. You could make your own records. This one is recorded on this side. Um, and it's got a big gash in it, but I was going to play it to see what's on there. The back side does not look like it was recorded. Um, but just to see what's on here. Some of these could go for big money. Especially, they have some that, you know, more famous artists did their own recordings on. You know, at their home or whatever. So, um, found some vintage prints. There's this one, which is the Old National Pike. It was sold by Stevens Art Gallery in St. Paul. It's got a sticker on the back. It's kind of nice that it's in this plastic sleeve. And then Lee Ward's Needlework Fabrics and Crafts. So these are, um, this, this one looks like just a, this is a lithograph print. But some of these are decoupage prints. So like these. And I tried to sell them at the store. They didn't sell. There's that one. This one, the Mushrooms. That should do well. Match A, match A. So you could do a long one on that. This is a another another mushroom. Mushrooms are popular. And there's this one, which is Anton Piak. So somebody had a whole lot of those that then they never used. Um, and I looked, I found, oh, am I drawing a blank on his name? Kermit. I found Kermit. These are from 1980, uh, 1987. And this one, 1987, Henson Associates. Um, Fozzie, Fozzie the Bear. I knew it'd come to me eventually. So nice vintage plush. I also found a Star Wars character, but I gave that to Joe because he has a Star Wars room. So he was excited to get the Ewok plush. All right, I'm going to get into the books. Now, this may be a little creepy to some people, but I <laughs> picked up this series. They're all on the same subject. So I'm going to lot these up and sell them, and you'd be surprised. They do sell. Harnessing the Earthworm. Indoor earthworm raising, made simple and inexpensive. Raising the African nightcrawler or tropical giant worm. How to raise two correct cash crops. Oh, I thought that was worms, it wasn't. Um, soilless worm bedding foundations. With tails we win, the wonder worm far farmers. And earthworm selling and shipping guide. And these do sell if you go out and search um, eBay earthworm books. So I'm going to lot these all up. I paid 
We pay 60 cents an inch, so I paid, you know, about a dollar 25, if that, for all of these books. And uh, I think I could easily, you know, 10 times my money. Probably about $15 is what I would sell these out for. It's great information as well. Um, found this, a Christmas Brown, a Charlie Brown Christmas. This is a first edition, and it even says right in the beginning, first printing. So it's a first edition, first printing, 1965. These are $20 to $25 books. This one is not in the best of condition. The spine is a little twisty in it and some wear to the corners. But still, being the first printing, it's worth the money. A fifth picture book. I read the title and I said, what in the world is this book about? I thought it was a cookbook. But it's not. It's actually a book about class pictures. She has gone through and identified all of these different patterns on glass pictures, glass pictures, from years and years and years, and she did her own illustrations. So, she's a good artist. Um, and I do not know when this book is from, and then she includes other illustrations and from their sales catalogs and whatnot so um 18 the, the latest date i can find in here is like 1890 1901 okay um there should be a copyright date somewhere i would think looks like a self-published book in other words she just went to the local printers and had it published I'm assuming, based on the looks of it, that it is probably from the 1950s, but I can't tell you for sure. But it's a great reference book. Anyway, children's books, The Fox with Cold Feet. Found some paperbacks, Dennis the Menace. I spent a little over $30 today. Uh, the Pancake Cookbook. How about that? Uh, the Watershed. Now, this book is probably a $15 to $20 paperback book. That's a good find. And then Up the Down Staircase um, by Kaufman, another great book. And then, as you guys know, I sell uh, Bibles. This is brand new, shrink wrapped, sealed. Uh, this is a gift and award Bible. So this is, you know, it's not an expensive one. Probably I could usually sell it for $10. Um, I got this for my nephew, Captain Underpants. Great Stories by Chekhov. Um, it's a $5 book. And then this Adele's Garden and Flower Guide. Uh, if you get the whole set of, there's a set of four of these. This is the fruit, um, fine fruit culture, cash crops. If you get all four of the series, this is number three, if I didn't say that already, they're worth some money, but just the individual book is not worth that much money. But this will go down to the pink elephant. So um, I think that is pretty much what I found. Oh, I'm missing anything. Oh, yes. This was unusual. I saw this. Again, it's a vintage piece just from the packaging. I was like, but what is it? So I pulled it out, and it's a wind meter. Never saw one before. So it says, face the wind, hold the meter in front of you in vertical position, and with scale side toward you. Do not block bottom holes. Height of ball indicates wind velocity. For high scale, cover hole at extreme top with finger. For high scale. Oh, so if it's... You know, if it's just regular wind, I'll see if I can blow in it. Let me say, hold the hole. I don't know why it's not moving. Oh. I have no idea. I guess I need to read the instructions as to which end works. 
static free clean use pipe cleaners that's why the pipe cleaners are in there but yeah i was like oh that's fun i'll have to look that up and see what it's worth but anyway thank you guys so much for watching i know it's a little longer video than usual but it's a lot of fun we'll catch you guys next time